Day three of 30, we're talking about uh, claims, uh, what uh, drives your claims, and how to protect yourself from those claims. So let's get after it. Uh, this is basically a three-step process, pretty simple, right? First of which is you are going to uh, need to understand what you do uh, and how you do it. And this seems pretty uh, elementary, but for a lot of organizations, um, they're constantly thinking about how they do things, um, the way they go about doing their business. And why that's important is because as new technology comes into play, or if you're changing your business model, or what products you make, or how you do things, all of those changes are going to make a big impact on your claims, uh, the claims that you have, and the claims that you know might have been near misses in the future, or the claims that you successfully end up avoiding. So uh, if you're an organization that has a pretty diverse um, structure or you have a pretty diverse operation, you know, each and every single one of those different things that you do on a daily basis uh, is going to generate some exposure to having a claim. And it could be uh, an exposure in any one of a number of different areas like property or workers' comp injuries or, you know, liability and, and cyber liability and things like that. So you really have to get down to, all right, how are we going to go about doing our business? And then as a result of doing that, uh, what are the considerations that we have to include as far as claims that could happen and how we're going to stop them from happening? Or if they do happen, how do we limit them uh, from being catastrophic and just being kind of, you know, regular garden variety, run-of-the-mill claims? All right, step two. Uh, what what did our claims look like in the past? Uh, what has been our experience? And you could also lump into this, you know, what's the industry's experience, or you know, what are my uh, my uh, competitors or, or my my contemporaries uh, in terms of the other people in the industry that are doing similar things? What's their been? What's their experience been? So you're going to look at your claims history. Uh, you have to look at first of all the trend, right? So are things getting better, or worse? Or are they pretty consistent? Um, you know, obviously, if things are getting worse. Uh, that's not good, uh, but, you know, things can be relative, right? So, you know, you can have a bunch of uh, new claims that you didn't have in the past or your claims could be going up each year. But if you're rapidly growing, taking on more staff, doing more things or diversifying what you're doing with your organization, all of that can contribute to your claims going higher. So it's not necessarily, you know, a, a firestorm, but uh, you have to keep that in a relative perspective. Now, if you're pretty much doing the same things today that you were doing, you know, 12 months ago, 24 months ago, but your claims are increasing, that is a warning, uh, a warning flag, a red flag that you need to address something pretty quickly. So the other thing you want to look at is the type of claims that you're having. <clears throat> are you having a bunch of small little nuisance claims? Uh, are you having some, you know, moderately sized claims that are infrequent? Uh, are you having, you know, have you had a catastrophic claim in the past or have you had multiple catastrophic claims in the past? And typically, most organizations have uh, a little bit of everything, right? They'll, they'll have some small little nuisance stuff, they'll have the medium things, and then they'll have the really big things. Um, if they're lucky, they've avoided, avoided the really big things, but uh, it, it happens. I mean, uh, St Superstorm Sandy happened on the East Coast, and there weren't too many businesses that were able to successfully just avoid that impact. Uh, but you're, you're always going to have a, vi a variety, so you have to you know understand what type of claims am I having based off the size, but also... What are the circumstances surrounding those claims? Are they claims that result uh, from a poor execution of the program and the policies and procedures that you have in place? Are they just simple, you know, just kind of forgetfulness or, uh, you know, what I would call, you know, those kind of like duh claims where someone does something that uh, is, is something that, you know, you obviously shouldn't be doing or, or they just in the moment they had a, a, a lapse in their their thinking and they did something that was completely off the wall and that's what caused the claim. Uh, you also need to identify whether or not your claims are coming from specific sources. Are they coming from all over your organization or are they coming from one division, one department? Sometimes it can boil down as far as even you know one employee that's really uh, in, you know uh, basically the inspiration or the cause behind a lot of these things. So you have to really kind of dig into them, rely on your risk professional to give you some expertise and some perspective on this. They will have seen a lot of different organizations claim histories and what's driven those claims, and they're going to be able to slice and dice them so that you get a much better picture 
than just kind of you know what you might see in the the raw data or you know the raw uh, claims files that you you might get from the insurance company okay within step number two when you're analyzing your claims the uh, industry term is lost drivers you're going to look for lost drivers and lost drivers can be like we said that you know one employee that's having an issue um, but it, the lost driver is not the employee the employee uh, you know how they do their work could be the lost driver whether they're um, you know maybe they're doing things correctly uh, according to what the policies and procedures are it's just that the policies and procedures are um, not sufficient to, to do things well or safely or uh, with, with a good level of prudence. So you need to identify those very granular things that are causing the issues. You know, uh, have you had fire claims where, you know, combustible materials are next to open flames or next to areas where they might come in contact with open flames? That's a loss driver. Um, you know, on the workers' comp front, do you have a, a bunch of employees that are hurting their back? as a result of the type of work that they're doing, or maybe they're doing it uh, unsafely, or maybe they don't have the right uh, equipment to use so that they can do it without hurting themselves. All of those, um, if identified, are gonna be considered loss drivers. And each of your loss drivers, you're gonna then want to uh, address those loss drivers. Um, so step three is going to be the uh, address the loss drivers step within this pro process. And addressing the loss drivers can be a very wide variety. Um, in traditional risk, traditional risk management, you'll hear things like uh, avoidance, which is you know just not doing uh, something. But you know if you're in a business or you run an organization, uh, that's usually not an option. So you have to find another way of doing it. Um, you know we also talk about uh, as risk managers uh, the idea of separation. Um, so you can separate separate things or duplicate them and make them safer or more reliable. And so uh, an example of separating things would be that, you know, combustible material example where if one operation uses fire and then another one creates a bunch of uh, garbage or, or excess uh, material that's combustible, don't put them right next to each other. You might want to space them out within the, the same location or maybe even put them in two completely separate locations uh, to keep from those things from being safe. The idea of duplication is, um, Less so to do with um, uh, less so to do with you know typical like catastrophic claims or accidental claims, has more so to do with your business uh, interruption or or avoiding a business interruption. If you have two machines as opposed to one and one breaks down, you can still continue to do work on the second machine. Uh, whereas if you have one single machine that's responsible for the majority of what you make or what you do and it breaks, then you're kind of up creek because you don't have another option. Uh, or other options that might be used elsewhere might be very expensive, and that's going to cut into how you know profitable or successful your your business or your organization is. Um, there's a huge variety of ways of of addressing loss drivers. Good risk management professionals uh, keep an open mind. They get creative sometimes. Uh, creative solutions uh, quite often you know can fix a problem that everyone else thought was unfixable uh, or address an issue that in the past everyone thought was unaddressable. Uh, just the advent of smartphones and apps and things like that have created a huge number of tools that can be used to address things that were not easy to address efficiently or not able to, you know, you weren't able to address at all in the past. So uh, work with your risk management professional to look at those individual loss drivers and really come up with a plan to either address them or, you know, like I said before, maybe change how things are being done within your organization, but still able to achieve the same goals that you're looking to achieve. So, uh, all right, this is uh, the third day. Thank you very much for tuning in. Again, uh, please subscribe, uh, for, you know, follow us on uh, social media channels. Uh, if you want to get this in your inbox, you can go to our website, treadstonerisk.com to sign up. And please like, share, comment. We want to start a conversation. And if you have questions, we want to get back to you. So thanks. See you on day four.